we all have that one show. That one show that we resonate with. The one that we'll always cherish. That one show that we can't help but revisit time and time again. That show to me is my virtual escape. I wanted to sit down with all of you today to gush about my favorite show, My Virtual Escape. I want to home in on why this show is unique, why it's special, and most importantly, why it matters. So get comfy and grab some XP, and let's have some fun times as we delve into one of YouTube's obscure, hidden, and underappreciated masterpieces. Before we dive deep, I think it's best we touch upon what came before My Virtual Escape, and how the show came to be. Jesse Ridgway is a 29-year-old filmmaker who got his start in 2006 and is behind the McJugger Nuggets YouTube channel. He would upload homemade skits made with the help of his friends and family, and would go on to create one of the most important series of videos of its time. The Psycho Series is a series of videos that documented a young man's life with his family while finding himself at odds with his arrogant and strict father. It was a story-driven narrative that ran from 2012 to 2016 and was portrayed as reality. And let me tell you, it had millions of us convinced. Each video was crafted so wonderfully and had lots of thought put into every decision. The acting was top-notch and was so convincing it had viewers reporting the videos to the police. This series is so important for its time and still is today. With the current climate of the YouTube platform, nothing like this will ever be able to happen again. But enough about the Psycho series. Let's move on. During the summer of 2016, Jesse was conceptualizing his next big series. His previous work used gaming as a backdrop, and he was thinking of another series that could use gaming as a backdrop while also being more modern and being able to speak a generation into the future. Virtual reality was starting to kick off around this time, and it became the main topic. My Virtual Escape was originally intended to release in November of 2016, but due to ongoing issues with the Psycho Family documentary and the Psycho series behind the scenes content, it was pushed back a year later as a result. The series began on October 29th, 2017, and came to a close on July 4th, 2018. My Virtual Escape is a story revolving around 18-year-old Isaac Calder, an edgy, troubled recent high school graduate who falls into a depression after the death of his sister and the divorce of his parents. This leads to alcoholism, future drug addiction, and a more aggressive and hostile attitude. Isaac tries to resent and shut out anyone who tries to help him, and as a result wants to escape all of his problems. He struggles to find meaning in his life until he stumbles across a cutting-edge virtual reality headset called EVE, or Everyone's Virtual Escape. My Virtual Escape does a successful job at telling an endearing and engaging coming-of-age story. It's a story accompanied by a lovable and memorable cast of characters, Moments that will have you at the edge of your seat, moments that will make you reach for the box of tissues, and plot twists are at every corner. The show provided a way for viewers to interact with the story for the choice system. At the end of every episode, viewers were given two choices as to where the story could go. I think this inclusion really helped in making My Virtual Escape a bingeable show as the system would leave viewers curious about which choice was chosen, resulting in them continuously watching. My Virtual Escape possesses a tone and atmosphere it can call its own. There's really nothing else like it. The show had a filming and dialogue style similar to a vlog, but at the same time it was crafted and written like a mainstream series. The characters in My Virtual Escape talk and feel like actual people, and it helps in making this world feel alive. I find all of this really unique, and I believe these traits set it apart from other dramas. My Virtual Escape includes a full-on original soundtrack sung by Juliet Riley, with Jesse financing it. 
Each song fits perfectly with every scene, and the lyrics actually do have relation to the show. You can actually find foreshadowing and easter eggs in there. Just, oh my god, each song is a fucking banger. Please take a listen. I honestly believe this soundtrack is near flawless. It all comes together in helping My Virtual Escape have an identity of its own. It's not often you see fully original soundtracks produced for a YouTube series. By the way, this version of Jenny Was a Friend of Mine is probably one of the rare instances of a cover outdoing the original song. It goes so, so hard. Please go listen to this soundtrack if you haven't already. My Virtual Escape is riddled with easter eggs and foreshadowing all over the place. You definitely won't catch many on your first go, but you start to notice them with every rewatch. These are all placed cleverly, so I thought it'd be nice to touch upon some instances found throughout the show. In the song Uneven, the Eve part of the name is sung with heavy emphasis throughout, foreshadowing Isaac's dead sister Eve. In the episode, Fallen Angel, Mother Sarah speaks to Joseph and says, I know it's been a while, and at the time you had a drinking problem. This angers Joseph, because Mother Sarah was going to bring up Eve's death. I know it's been a while, and at the time you had a drinking problem, but Don't even go there. That's nothing that needs to be brought up here. I was just... No! You know that that's a problem, and I told you before that I don't want to ever bring it up again. You've been with his family for how long, and you've known I had a problem, I'm and sorry. you had to go there. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. I was just But you know in the past it's upset me, but yet you go there. I'm sorry, Joseph. I don't accept your apology. <laughs> Joseph. In the episode, Scouting Solomons, Abraham refuses to give Isaac a gun, so he grabs a fire poker to use as a weapon, 
This is foreshadowing Isaac using the fire poker to stab Abraham in Judgment Day. Surveillance, that's all we're going to do. Well, you Shouldn't gone. be too hard, should you it? You could have gun. You ain't getting no fucking gun, I told you that before. Do solid I told you you gotta earn all that shit. This is a gang, we, man? We can't go in there with guns blazing. There's 11 of them. Didn't I just tell you you had okay, 11 right, brothers? Well, 11 brothers, I'm gonna need to defend myself, man. You got a gun, you got a fucking knife too. This is just in case something goes wrong. Right, you know what? I'm getting one of these. I'm getting a fucking fire cooker, dude. I'm getting you a melee weapon. Shit with that, man. I'll fuck somebody's day up, You ain't gonna fuck nobody up. Put that shit back, I man. Left for dad. I Put kill it Zion. back, man. You can't take that. You're gonna probably kill yourself. I'll be fine, man. I can handle myself. Yo, let's get this fucking man. thing going. Okay. Just don't fucking touch me, alright? In the episode, God's Plan, Solomon's hat foreshadows the ending of the show, where it takes place in Hawaii. In the episode, Paralyzed, Isaac is seen playing the game Limbo during the first song montage. The game tells the story of a boy searching for his lost sister. This also foreshadows Eve. My Virtual Escape is composed of a large cast of people with little to no acting experience. But despite all of that, everyone manages to give a stellar performance. Except for you, Buzz. Sorry. Nobody in this entire world is more annoying than you are. The show had a total of 24 episodes, and the episodes were pumped out every Sunday. Now I know for a standard serialized television series, this isn't really much to write home about. But Jesse handled writing, editing, and played the role of Isaac while filming certain scenes all on his own with rewrites in the script the day of. My Virtual Escape is seriously impressive when you take all of this into account. That's why it's special. When talking about a show like My Virtual Escape, I believe it's important to shed some light on the characters, break them down to their core, and there isn't any better way to start than with Isaac himself. Isaac is all about his sister. He hates himself because Joseph instilled in him that he's at fault for Eve's death. But after he stumbles upon Eve, he realizes there's a chance to bring her back. He puts up a tough act because he doesn't want to connect with people after Eve died and, get, and to get hurt again. Throughout the series, he opens up and matures, as symbolized by wearing the beanie less and getting shorter hair. He also goes from careless to driven. His journey for our Eve taught him many lessons that stuck with him, resulting in the Isaac we see when the show comes to a close. Abraham is all about recognition. He made Eve, but was pushed out of the company after Eve's death. He still holds a lot of guilt for it as Abraham, but once he goes into Eve, he can play as Arachnid and leave all the guilt and pain behind. Arachnid is the more vengeful side compared to Abraham's emotional side, but even as Arachnid, he still can't help but let some of his guilt back in, symbolized by the teardrop tattoos. In the beginning of the series, he's able to differentiate between Arachnid and Abraham, but later, the line gets blurred, and they almost merge back into one person. Abraham wouldn't have fought Isaac in Judgment Day, but Arachnid wouldn't have let Isaac live at the end. It's like a middle ground. Joseph is all about revenge. He believes Abraham is to blame for Eve's death, and he wants to make him pay the price. He manipulates Mother Sarah, Elijah, Jinji, and even his own son into trying to kill Abraham just to settle his score. He doesn't like to reflect on himself. He'd rather push all of his guilt onto others. He blames Isaac for Eve's death, Mary's divorce, and Mary to his death. And obviously, he blames Abraham on Eve's death as well. Malachi is all about escapism. He's paralyzed and can't move in the real world, but he escapes in VR where he's able to live with no restrictions. His disability in the real world makes him feel like he's lesser than everyone else. So once he's in the game, he thinks he's better than everyone now that he's finally at an even level. Rebecca is all about her kids. 
She plays the game to presumably wish for her husband to come back into her kid's life, but begins to fall for Isaac and doesn't want to feel like she's losing the love for her husband. It isn't until Isaac tells her about Eve that she gives up her wish, then gives him her address in the heist. Solomon is all about respect. She doesn't get respect from anyone as a little girl, so she becomes an old mob boss to garner respect in the virtual world. John is all about ego. He starts off as one of Solomon's right-hand men, but when he gets put in charge once Solomon leaves in Season 2, he finally tastes the power and loves it. This power causes him to make rash and risky decisions like attacking Isaac and Arachnid which leads in the Brotherhood being killed. When Solomon returns, John becomes a bitter that he has to give up his power, then eventually gets killed after Solomon finds out what he did. John thought that to be a good leader meant constantly flexing your power, but he dies to a man who picks and chooses his battles when he needs to. Mother Sarah is all about God. She helps and works with Isaac because she thinks that's what God would want. Then once she goes too far and begins to steal, she tries to repent, but Joseph comes in as the overlord and takes advantage of her at her lowest to carry out his plan to kill Abraham. The core theme and message of My Virtual Escape is escapism, and in my opinion, to be appreciative of what you have, because it can always be worse. I think this Reddit essay sums it up better than I could. The core theme of this story is escapism, which shows how it can be entirely different for each person in the story. Isaac and Joseph show a difference in the grieving process, how tragedy can evoke more tragedy, and how tragedy can evoke the true good in you. It uses the theme of religion to show how faith can be so easily manipulated, and by Joseph setting a path for the players of Eve, he eventually killed everyone in the game only to also be deluded by his own faith. Not a faith that contains religion, but his own narcissism and his god complex, destroying himself and everyone around him. Isaac is the polar opposite on the same coin, still being manipulated by his father but using Eve and his compassion for others to conquer what he thought was evil, which was Abraham until his last breath. Abraham was a character that was like Isaac, that wanted to help people, but was taken down by his own guilt, and had walls built up which Isaac was able to take down with his empathy, but it was too late for him and Joseph had already caused too much damage. Isaac broke the dissimulation by his faith, getting his own happy ending through Eve. Even then, his real life will still consist of problems. Eve is Eve. Escapism, good, evil, faith, compassion, and so on. My Virtual Escape has a total of four behind the scenes videos, one for each season. In these you'll find a comprehensive look into the making of the show with fun facts and trivia. If you're really into this sort of thing, I absolutely recommend you give them a watch. The behind the scenes videos go deep into Jesse's need for perfection, and I feel it's very evident all throughout these videos. Jesse cared very much about every scene and line being perfect, and even the simplest of scenes have many outtakes. We learn that Jesse got so into the character of Isaac that he genuinely believed that he too had a sister. But his friend and camera woman, Emily Saxton, would have to consciously remind him that he had no sister at all. That's some serious dedication. If you'd like to hear more about the development of my virtual escape, maybe considering checking out my documentary on the show. I was lucky enough to interview Jesse himself and he goes a bit into the show's development process. Currently, as it stands, My Virtual Escape doesn't exactly have its own dedicated fan base or community, and instead it's a branch of the larger McDragon Nuggets community. It's not quite as active as it used to be, but the community was very active during the show's runtime. Constant discussions regarding whatever episode was out at the time, and discussing theories and speculation were a major element at the time. 
As a matter of fact, why don't we delve into one of the theories that was pretty common during the show's runtime. It was revealed in the episode, A Tangled Web, fans had theorized that instead of falling from a window, Eve's cause of death happened to be drowning. Fans came to this conclusion based off a few details. In the song Lighthouse, there are the lyrics, You were floating like an angel hologram, and I tried to pull you out. The song seemed to lay out hints that Isaac's sister may have drowned, though as we know now it wasn't the case. There, there's a possibility that it could have been a red herring if anything. Regardless of the fact, I can totally see how one could come to this conclusion based on these details. My Virtual Escape seems to have more relevance than ever. The series has started to receive more appreciation than Jesse's latest videos, most notably the Devil Inside Season 4 video, The Prophecy, which includes cameo appearances from Solomon and Malachi themselves. We learn that Jesse Tyler's dog, Jenny, is actually a drug dog that comes from the universe of My Virtual Escape. And even earlier than that, in 2020, we come to find out she's actually Isaac's dog. While the appreciation for the series in these videos are awesome, they come with actual reason. Over the last few years, there have been rumbles about a potential sequel to My Virtual Escape. Initially spoken about in 2020, Jesse talks about being in talks with streaming services about a My Virtual Escape 2. From then up to this point, My Virtual Escape 2's development has been a wild one, with talks going good to silence. In 2022, Jesse talked about in a live stream that he was actually in talks with a streaming service to produce the project, although he was thinking on if he'll take the deal. As of the time of this video, the development of My Virtual Escape 2 seems to be silent. A bit ago, Jesse confirmed that his manager had ghosted him that he was hoping to get back in contact with him soon. We call this a sequel currently, though Jesse also refers to it as a My Virtual Escape spin-off, so we'll have to wait and see there. The cameos in the prophecy were there for a reason, as a sort of tease for My Virtual Escape 2 as talks were going great at the time of the video. I'm holding out hope that we'll soon get this anticipated continuation. My Virtual Escape means so, so much to me. There's absolutely nothing like it, and I hope this talk here today has shown you that. I absolutely love everything about this series, and while it isn't perfect, it doesn't need to be. It does everything that it needs to, an endearing and wonderfully crafted story, a large cast of lovable and relatable characters, a killer soundtrack, and a heartwarming yet bittersweet conclusion. Isaac is such a relatable protagonist, and while my life isn't anywhere near as bad as his, I still came to resonate with him. I make a lot of my virtual escape content on my off time. From fan art, to video edits, to even beginning a manga adaption. I've also been grateful to have the opportunity to chat with Jesse a few times over the last few months, and I just, just can't help but gush about this series and what it means to me and so many others. I hope this video reaches many people and encourages them to check out this story. It's one of YouTube's hidden, obscure masterpieces that doesn't nearly get the amount of love and appreciation that it deserves. I want to thank my friend Scrubster for consulting with me on the writing and information in this video, as he helped me with quite a bit here, especially the character analysis section. I also want to thank Jesse himself and the extended cast of My Virtual Escape for delivering a piece of media I'll never, ever forget. You guys are all awesome, and I hope to see you all reunite someday for a sequel. We've made it to the end, and we've learned a lot today. We went over why it's unique, why it's special. But the question of the matter is, why does... My Virtual Escape Matter. My Virtual Escape matters because it was made for the art, even while knowing it would be a financial failure. It's a story that is oozing with love, passion, and hard work. The budget for this show was $93,000, and 
and in the end Jesse suffered an $83,000 loss. My virtual escape was coming out around the start of the YouTube apocalypse, and it was setting itself apart from what many other creators were doing at the time. My virtual escape wasn't about the views, or the money, it was about telling a story, it was about the creative, and that is why my virtual escape matters.